It's an honor to appear before you this afternoon to seek your approval to be America's next ambassador to the Republic of Kenya. I'm truly grateful to President Obama, to Secretary Clinton for the confidence that they have placed in me, for the nomination to represent our country in Kenya. If confirmed, I'll work with you and other members of Congress to advance American interests in Kenya, to promote a common understanding between our two countries. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce my wife, Judy, a mother of our four children, and my full partner in over 35 years of public service. If confirmed, Judy will bring a wealth of knowledge to this assignment. She was born in Nairobi. She spent her childhood in Kenya as a daughter of missionary teachers. And in fact, both of her parents are buried there in Kenya. Like Judy, I was also raised in Africa, Congo and Kenya. I learned to speak Swahili as a toddler and developed a lifelong interest in the region. In 1974, I returned to Kenya to do humanitarian work. In the early 80s, I spent time as an F-5 instructor pilot in Kenya for two years. Um, General Gration, if I might, um, the International Criminal Court uh, has recently uh, summoned, I believe it's six individuals uh, from Kenya accused of crimes against humanity during the post-election violence of 07 and 08, and I believe they're appearing in The Hague uh, just a few days from now. Uh, if confirmed as ambassador, what would be your approach to handling uh, these ICC cases in Kenya? Um, I noted that uh, the Kenyan government has called for an Article 16 uh, delay, uh, arguing instead for local tribunals to address these questions uh, of violence, and the AU has endorsed Kenya's request. Um, what is your view um, of the issue of deferment? Uh, do you believe the ICC process threatens uh, peace and stability in Kenya, as some have claimed? Uh, and given your prior experience uh, with the ICC and uh, Sudan, uh, how will you handle this in the context of Kenya? Uh, thank you. Certainly, I believe that uh, the underlying issues have to be resolved, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But just to answer your questions directly, in terms of an Article 16 deferment, uh, I don't support that, neither does our country, and uh, don't believe that if there was a deferment, that it would change the peace and security situation, either in Kenya or regionally. And in fact, as it may uh, in some way exacerbate the situation. There is other processes, or there are, that uh, the Kenya government is pursuing. One is uh, asking whether Article 17 and Article 19 would be appropriate, and that would be where they would appeal to the ICC to have the process moved back into Kenya, but the ICC would have to approve that process. If indeed they do that, and ICC approves the process, that may be uh, one other avenue that the government has, but uh, in terms of Article 16, uh, we don't support that. As we go towards the 2012 uh, elections in Kenya, what are the things that we can and should be doing to continue uh, to push along the path of reform, um, to strengthen democratic institutions uh, in Kenya, uh, to ensure we don't have a repeat uh, of the 2007 elections and their irregularities? Um, and what do you think um, should be our major concerns in terms of potential flashpoints uh, as we move towards those elections? Certainly we need to encourage all segments of the population to become involved in this. Uh, in other words, we have to have programs that not only help the government itself uh, with the implementation programs, and we do need to help those. But we need to help people like Patrick Lumumba and folks that are working with corruption. We need to engage uh, again and continuously with the civil society to make sure that the people understand the process and they understand that democratic reform will give them a voice that's clear and that represents exactly what they're saying and that it does that without fear. Uh, we need to engage the youth because much of the actual violence was done by the youth, even though they may have been controlled by other uh, aspects of the, of the government or, or individuals. But the youth have to become part of the solution. They have to understand that it's not about bullets 
Uh, it's about ballots. It's not about machetes, but it's about getting out there and making a difference with words and votes and concepts. And uh, so it's going to take an education process, and that's some things that we can do through our USAID grants, uh, through things that we become involved in, things we put our fingerprints on. Uh, but the bottom line is, is just to, to, again, push on accountability, push on, on these, wherever we are, uh, through all aspects of our embassies, so that, in my view, that should be the highest priority of getting from now until whether it's next August or next December when the vote is, election is held, that we've done everything possible so that we can ensure that it's peaceful. And if for some reason that it's not, we'll look back and say we've done everything we could have done. Uh, a recent BBC report um, projected that maybe as much as a third of the uh, Kenyan national government spending is lost or wasted through corruption. Uh, it has not ranked high uh, on transparency uh, indices. Uh, how pervasive do you think uh, a problem or challenge of corruption is for Kenya? Is it potentially a source of some uh, tension or difficulty uh, in the same way that it has been in other countries that have recently seen popular uprisings? Uh, what sort of a barrier is it to uh, U.S.-Kenya trade, and, and what can we do to help uh, those elements within Kenyan society and leadership that really want to tackle and fight uh, corruption uh, within Kenya? Exactly right. From what I understand, uh, Kenya is rated 154 out of 178 in terms of the corruption index. Uh, this, in my view, has to stop. And it's not going to be able to stop in a, even maybe even under my tenure. But I think that uh, if confirmed, this is something that, that we need to put a big dent in. Because while the government officials and other people who are in a position to take, uh, while they gain what it's doing is it's just destroying uh, the opportunities for creating wealth at the local level. It's, uh, Kenya is, is suffering with, well, they already have about half their population under 18, mm -hmm. but if you take a look at folks under 30, only about 30% really have jobs that are producing incomes upon which they can support a family and their uh, desired livelihood.